and we are joined today by Elizabeth, who had some experience in the movement. I'm super excited about our conversation. So Elizabeth, give me a little bit of background. How, like, how did you get involved in this movement? Was this something you were raised in? Was it something you joined later on in life? Yeah, I was pretty much born into it. And I don't know, it's funny, until I started talking to you, I hadn't really heard it called a movement, but it was just something my parents always taught. You know, I wasn't supposed to go to school. I wasn't supposed to have a career. I was going to grow up and get married and have babies. And that was pretty much what I was here for. How would you define what it means to have this ideology in just a snippet for someone who's never heard of it before? And they're like, wow, this is really seems kind of different. Yeah, it was mostly based around the idea that, you know, the perfect wife and mother doesn't work outside the home. She stays home, takes care of the family. And you were raised with that in mind. Like, that's what you were going to do. That was your job. So, yeah, I mean, my family personally, I was allowed to work, but they wanted me to work in like childcare, things that in their mind would prepare me to be a better wife and mother. And why... Why was that? Why were there certain, were there certain jobs that was like, this was okay, certain jobs that were not okay. And what was the difference that, that made it like an okay job for you? It did, was not an okay job for you. Different things for different jobs. Um, any kind of professional career they were very against. They didn't want me. Part of it was just things like taking authority over men. Some of it was, they considered safety concerns, like say a grocery store cashier you know, some of it was wanting to kind of limit other people's influence on me. So like when I went to work at a daycare, it was a Baptist church daycare. So it was a Christian environment. I mean, it was a, it was a good transitional environment. I don't think they intended it that way, but it turned out to be a really great thing for me. Um, Just other things like that. That's why college was not encouraged because then, you know, what are you going to do with that degree? You don't, you're just wasting money when you're not going to get a job. Or you may decide you want a job and get a career that, you know, can't be God's will for you because you're a woman and you're intended to get married and stay home and raise your children. Okay. So let's rewind a little bit. Growing up, what what, was there a teacher that really your, your parents were following pretty strongly? Was there a group of people? Was this your church? Where were these ideas coming from? I think when I was really little. I think I was a year old when we joined this particular church and four or five when we left, there was, there were two families in particular that they kind of looked up to followed because they had more kids and they were very um, Bill Gothard inspired Mm -hmm. and followed a lot of those teachings. And I know for a fact, they've raised their daughter. One, well, one has five boys, one girl, one has two girls, six boys. So they didn't have very many girls anyway. The one with five boys and a daughter, she's trying to think how old she is now. Gosh, she's like 37, 38, I think, and still living at home. She did kind of branch out and get an education and career while she was at home. She had to kind of rebel a little bit to just do that. But that was what they followed. And I think that's kind of what my parents wanted originally. And even, I will say, even we left that church, but there was a church split. And so we ended up at the same church they were at before. So until I was about seven, they were around this family a lot. And it's like, they're very nice people, but they just followed a lot of these teachings. And I think that's where they first picked up on it the most. So now this is kind of interesting because as you're talking about, you know, this family and the church that influenced you a lot, you said that, you know, their one of their daughters is still kind of practicing this. Would you say that this movement is still, being practiced by some people, being practiced in the same way, being practiced maybe a little bit um, not quite as strict. Do you have any idea or just kind of instinct on where where it's at today? I only know what I've seen and I don't see it as much. I know they are kind of more on the outskirts. There's a family about an hour and a half, two hours away from here that has a church that I think they follow it a little more. I think they had like a florist shop and the dad at first didn't even want the girls working in the shop, but he kind of, I mean, just out of necessity, society today, you kind of have to. So they ended up working in the family shop. So I know they do it. And I know some people up in like Virginia that do it, but those are the only families I can think of right now. I think it's interesting fading away a little. Was there a particular denomination that was strong in your upbringing that 
came alongside these ideas or was the denomination kind of separate from the ideas? At least when I was younger, it was a big thing in the independent fundamental Baptist. Now, the independent fundamental Baptist churches I was a part of when I was older were not so strict like that. They might still have like basic girls were going to college to find husbands, but they were okay yeah. with, okay, if their daughter wanted to take nursing, but, you know, they were okay with some working outside the home, teaching. It's kind of a modified version, but not as strict but mm-hmm. I haven't seen it outside the independent fundamental at all. So then when you got old enough to be done with high school, was there a conversation that you had with your parents? Did you go on to college? Was it college was out of the picture? What, what happened at that point? Yeah, it was never really in the picture. It was just kind of told from the beginning. I was never leaving home to go to college. That was wrong. And I did graduate when I was 16, which made okay. it a little more difficult in the first place. But there was like a correspondence writing course through the Christian Writers Guild. My mom was like, well, we'll help you take that if you want. Because, you know, again, writing is a good thing you can do from home while you're taking care of a house. So and I liked writing. I loved it. You know, yeah. it was reading was a big escape for me. And so was writing. Mm-hmm. So I did that. They were like, OK, well, if you want to, because another family rule for everybody was you can't drive until you're 18. So they were like, well, if you want to get a job and start saving up so you can pay your own car and insurance and everything, that's the only thing that's really going to happen. So you can start looking for a job and a daycare. What were your thoughts at that time? Did you feel like, yeah, you know, this makes sense. I kind of want to stay home, find a husband. I don't need to pursue a career. Or did you have a desire to go out and, you know, try something different, maybe a different kind of a job, maybe college, a career, something like that? I was 16. So I was like, okay, yeah, no more schoolwork. That sounds great. Um, I did want to get out of the house and be around people. I liked kids. I liked doing church nursery and stuff. So I was like, okay, daycare's fine. So there wasn't a lot of opposition then. Wasn't mm-hmm. really a lot of exploring. It was kind of more later when I was like, there's more things I want to do. There's more things I want to learn. I kind of have some other interests that I didn't even know I had because they've never been an option before. So So walk me through your next years. Did you find a husband right away and pursue that, you know, path that they wanted of getting married, having kids at, you know, a young age? Or did that take a while? How did that all pan out? Not at all. I did not get married till I was 30. And, And now granted, part of that was more a lack of opportunity because I was picky. Yeah. You know, and the, I wasn't in a circle where you met a lot of guys. We were in the small independent fundamental Baptist church. We would get a couple interns from Pensacola Christian college. Those were our options. And yeah. I didn't like any of them. Most of them had somebody anyway. So I was like, eh, you know, every little like college group that came through, I was kind of looking, I was like, eh. And it was funny because even at, you know, I started out the daycare. I was at the daycare for a little under two years. And then I decided to become a private nanny. Okay. And so like I said, it was a good transition because it was a Southern Baptist daycare. Not everybody there was Southern Baptist, but they were still compared to what I'd been around, you know, so liberal, you know, they right. went to movies, they wore pants. I mean, yeah, these were normal people that were going to school and were like, what are you talking about getting married? You're 18 years old. Go do something first. Then when I went as a nanny, I started working for two medical students that had, had a baby. She okay. was from Brazil. He was, you know, and they were just, again, normal people that were like, they love me. They love how I took care of the baby, but some, they're like, sometimes we were a little bit worried about you at home <laughs> mm-hmm. because they could just tell, they're like, we could tell you're smart and we wanted you to go to school and do things. And we we're really worried you were going to end up in some young marriage when you weren't happy. And so they were actually a really good influence on me because they would just kind of talk me through things, but they were very, some of it was her being from Brazil. They have a very respectful relationship with their parents. They go do their own thing, but they're able to kind of, she was able to kind of walk me through respectfully asserting myself some. Um, I'm still very close to them. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, a few things. You know, and then one time when I was at my friend's house, I met one of her brother's friends. I was about 19 at the time. Did not think he was for me. He was this cute guy, flirty guy. And like, we got along. Sure. But I knew a little thing. Like, I knew he would go outside to smoke. I wasn't into smoking. They're like, yeah, he's not really a Christian guy, not really a church guy, but he came asking about me and wanted to go out with me. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I don't want to go on a date, but maybe we should go just the four of us go to dinner, at least get to know him. So I can't be like, eh, I heard bad things about you. I don't want to go out with you. I was like, that's not fair. 
So mm. we had arranged, you know, just going to go to eat dinner. And I didn't tell my parents because even though I was 19, I knew they were going to freak out. Well, they found out because I'd emailed one of my friends stupidly on the shared computer, but okay. they, <laughs> they read about it and they were like, no. And I try, even tried to explain. I was like, I'm not, I don't want to go out with him. I don't think I'm going to date him, but I'm 19. I feel like I should at least be able to tell him yes or no. And they're like, basically, like, no, that's our decision. And no. You know, and then I was planning to go to Disney World with this friend that they had approved. I was working, making my own money, had paid for this trip myself. And they're like, well, if you go out with him, we're going to cancel your Disney World trip. Looking back now, I'm like, how would they have even done that? They didn't have access to anything. But I was trying to be a good daughter, keep things calm at home. I still live there. And so I was like, hey, look, like I this is really awkward, but I, you have to tell him I can't, they wouldn't even let me talk to him to tell him I couldn't go. Like a friend's mom had to tell him and he was like, well, that was really weird. Yeah. That was the main thing that happened. I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit here, but did not get married. So I had been on my own a long time and could take time to make my own decisions about it. What was that process like for you? Was dating off the table? Like were you guys courtship hundred percent? Was it more of your, your parents chose your spouse for you or more that they were just very involved in the process and kind of the rulemaking behind, you know, chaperones and going out and that kind of thing? My parents felt like they were very liberal because they didn't do the arranged marriage thing. Like we knew people that tried to do like arranged marriages where like, this Mm -hmm. is the person you're going to marry. And I got to pick, but first of all, there was that guy, which they did eventually come back. I think they felt bad because I just kind of said, okay, you know, I don't agree with you, but I'm going to do it. And they're like, well, he can come to church and meet us and we can see. I was like, okay, well, he's not going to do that. So I told, and of course he came, which I did not expect him to. And we really, I mean, we got along great. He was a good friend, still are good friends, oddly enough. Mm-hmm. but it also made it weird because then he's like, Ooh, I have a chance to date you. And he kind of got his hopes up and it just made things weird. Okay. So then a few years later, I met somebody that was introduced by a mutual friend and our first date, my parents made us take my younger brother with us. Sure. <laughs> so he's in the back of the car. He just puts his headphones in. He's like, y'all do what you want. Like, I'm just here to help. <laughs> yeah. He sat at his own table and just didn't tell my parents that he didn't sit with us. Like we paid for his meal. I mean, the guy really, we had many issues later on, but he was very good about that at least. Yeah. And then when when we would go out, it was okay. Check, check in by text every couple hours. So we know where you are, know you're okay. And that just, so eventually the guy got tired of it and hid my phone. So my parents couldn't find me. Mm. So when I didn't check in every couple hours, my mom somehow went into my email and found his phone number and started calling his phone, which I found out later he was ignoring. Oh, and then they okay. start calling my friends that I was meeting up later to see if they'd heard from me yet. I mean, this whole, I was 22, 23 years old and he's sitting here going, this is stupid. They're controlling you. Why are you letting them do this? But he was also had a less than respectful relationship with his parents. And I was like, well, I don't want that either, but I was sure. also mad at him. So I'm like, well, by taking my phone and not letting me choose, you're also controlling me. So it was a mess, but I did finally have to put my foot down with that one and say, look, guys, I am an adult. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'm still living in your house, but it's got to loosen up. And about a year later, I think was I had broken up with him, but I still was like, I think I'm going to go find my own place. There's our preacher's daughter. Our preacher was moving back to Arkansas and his daughter needed a roommate. And I was like, I think we're going to go get an apartment. And mom was like, yeah, I kind of think that's a good idea. I think we've done this as long as we can. Okay. So at that point, even your, your mom was thinking, you know, this is okay for you to move out because of just how the dynamics are. Mm -hmm. Um, It got into where, I mean, we didn't even really like each other anymore because it was just so, so much friction. How was your relationship with your, and I think we probably have have kind of discussed a little bit, but how was your relationship with your parents affected by these ideas? Do you think things would have been better or worse without you know, this ideology that you need to stay home, you need to stay living with them, you can't move out, don't get your own apartment, don't get a job, those kind of ideas. I think it would have been so much better without it. I eventually got to the point where I resented it because I felt like we only had a relationship because I had to. Mm. You know, at one point I was like, they were the only people I saw. But if I could have moved on and included them in decisions in my life instead of having to come back later and say, hey, 
This is what I'm doing. And I know when I moved out, I distanced myself a lot because I knew they weren't going to approve of some of the decisions I was making, even though they weren't even bad decisions. <laughs> like Just right. things like I, I think I posted on Instagram the first time I went to a concert and my mom texted me about how embarrassing it was that I posted that I went to that. And it was the band Perry. You know, it wasn't anything mm-hmm. risque. But whereas if I could have talked to him and like, hey, I went to this concert last night. We had a lot of fun. You know, it just it would have helped things a lot. Let's talk about emotionally. So, you, you know, you've moved out. You're kind of more on your own. Did you find it difficult to develop healthy relationships? I mean, I think you touched on it a little bit with one of your um, boyfriends or, or guys you were going out with at that time where you said you felt like he was controlling you, but then you felt like your parents were controlling you. So you're kind of stuck in the middle. Did you find it difficult to um, develop healthy relationships? How did this, this movement and these ideas affect your relationships with other people? Now, friendships... I didn't have that much trouble with Um, when I was a teenager. I saw it more because my mom, first of all, didn't really want me bonding with other people. That was a big thing. You know, they, they homeschooled partially because of wanting to control the education, but partially because they felt like kids forming bonds with their teachers and other students would turn their heart away from their parents. So they very much wanted us to bond only with them. Hmm. And so my mom was very picky about who I could hang out with. I did have one really good friend. I mean, we're still friends. We've been friends since we were 11 years old. Both of us have completely left the movement altogether. But just getting out and meeting other people and kind of learning how to function in general. So thankfully, I met some good people that kind of learned. Well, you're 19. You have to ask your parents. Okay. I mean, it's weird, but you do you. (laughs) You Yeah, They were very understanding. But as I got older, I was like, I'm moving out. I'm doing this. They were very encouraging. And I had some really good friends that were like, don't do anything you don't want to do. Don't go do something just because you want to rebel against your parents. You know, do what you think is right. That really was good. When I first started working, I think it was a little weird for me being under, not necessarily under another authority, but an authority that wasn't as complete as my parents Right. I was very nervous. Didn't I wanted to do everything right. I mean, thankfully, again, I had some really good employers and I really just, I met a lot of good people that helped me through it a lot. It could have sure. been much, much worse. Let's talk about the, the dress beauty standards in a, in a lot of these circles, it was, you know, this kind of came along with a more of a strict dress code where you're not wearing pants, you are not wearing makeup. Was your family like that also? They were strict with the dress code. I couldn't wear pants. We couldn't wear sleeveless. They didn't like anything that was, they didn't even like something that was at the bottom of my knee. They like more mid-calf or lower. Um, My brothers couldn't wear shorts. They couldn't wear sleeveless. But the makeup, I guess my mom was always very self-conscious and really liked her makeup. So we were always allowed to wear makeup, cut our hair, jewelry, that kind of thing. So it was kind of a weird mix. Were there recreational activities like swimming, hunting, snowboarding that you were excluded from? Like, like some activities that were specifically manly activities versus activities that like women do? I didn't have to do any outside chores, which was kind of nice because I wasn't really big into that anyway. <laughs> um, now they did. My brother still had to learn how to wash dishes, clean the kitchen. I mean, okay. all that partially because my dad did a lot of that, mm-hmm. but, and he wasn't really into hunting. So some of that really wasn't an issue. Um, we didn't do any kind of swimming parties. We didn't go to the beach because, you know, other people might be wearing bathing suits and we'd see them naked. So we had a above ground pool at home. We could swim in that, but um, sports were discouraged for both me and my brothers, actually me, because it didn't, encouraged unladylike behavior, manly aggression, and them just because they felt like it encouraged malicious competition and they didn't want them to feel bad if they weren't as good as somebody else. Let's talk about the kind of religious theological basis. Did your, your parents or, you know, whoever was driving them in this movement have certain verses that they pointed to certain ideologies that they pointed to, to back up to back up this idea that women should you know, not move out, not get a career, not live on their own? Yeah, I mean, 
course, one of their fallbacks was always, well, it's never in the Bible that a girl moves out and get on her, go get on her own. It was, you know, Rebecca was at home. Mary was at home. All the women you see were at home. Um, and then, of course, Dinah got raped when she went out on her own without a chaperone. Um, and then Proverbs 31, of course, they felt like that figured in there. And then first or second Timothy, where it talks about the older women teach the younger women to be keepers at home. And King James is keepers at home, not keepers of the home and all that. They kind of went through. They're like, see, there's nothing in there about them going to college or having a career. You know, they're supposed to be at home with their children and their husband and making their life good. <laughs> So how did that, how do you see, you know, I guess, where is, where is your, um, religious ideas now? Are you still considering yourself a Christian? Have you completely put it all aside? And, and if you are, how do you kind of work these verses into your life now? I'm a Christian. I've been part of a Southern Baptist church here, but more and more, I'm kind of breaking away from a lot of the Southern Baptists as well. And, but I think a lot of it is if you look at the better translations, because of course we were King James only, and there's been updated, improved translations as they learned. I mean, they learned a lot about the languages since 1611, that a lot of it was just taken out of context. A lot of it, you know, yeah, maybe the women in the Bible didn't move out on their own, but that wasn't really an option back then. (laughs) Um, And then you could argue, I mean, there's women like Lydia that she was out on her own running a business The Proverbs 31 woman, she went out and made business deals and did all these things on top of what she did at home, made her own money, looked out, you know, for the husband's money as well. So I think a lot of it's just misunderstood. It's things that were just taken too literally out of context. Is there anything else that you, any other observations you made from growing up this way that you would like to share with other people? I've just seen a lot of unhappiness come from it. I've seen a lot of people that just latched onto the first person they met to get out of their house and it didn't end well. (laughs) And I honestly was in danger of that at one point, but for whatever reason, I guess God just protected me from it. And I didn't, you know, now, like I said, I didn't meet my husband. I met him when I was 27, but we didn't even start really dating till I was 28, Mm -hmm. got married when I was 30. You know, now I'm like, this is never where I saw myself at that age. If I had, tried to stay with my parents, tried to marry somebody. I mean, I can't imagine like what I would be missing out on. And I just really don't want people doing this to their children Mm -hmm. and blocking them from pursuing something that God is putting in their heart that maybe they were made to do. I mean, I feel like everyone's created for a purpose and everybody has something that they're going to do big or little people block them from that way too often. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. This has been like really interesting talking to you. I appreciate it. (laughs) You're welcome. It's been fun.